field hockey has long been part of the Olympic family and with next year's games looming on the horizon, it was time to find out the 14 nations, seven on the men's side and seven on the women's, that would be booking their tickets to Tokyo via the always dramatic Olympic qualifiers. The draw had taken place in Laos and Switzerland back in September and it generated some mouth-watering ties as past winners, defending champions and teams looking to make history by reaching the Games for the first time were thrown together over the course of two exciting weekends. The ties were contested over two legs with the highest ranked team having home advantage, the aggregate score would determine the winner and in the event of a draw, a penalty shootout would take place. Both the men and the women were in action over the course of two weekends, with the format being two matches played over two days where the higher ranked team was given home advantage. The aggregate score would determine which team was victorious and in the event of a draw, after two hours of play, there would be a shootout to separate the teams. There was a real global feel to the qualifiers with matches taking place all over the world. Our first port of call is Perth, Australia, where the Hockey Roos, ranked number two in the world, were set to face a Russian team they knew little about, but the hosts were quickly into their stride. It's gone all the way in. Well, would you believe it? Less than 60 seconds on the clock, and Australia have taken the lead. It's inside the circle, great save. But there's the rebound, and it's touched home. Amy Lawton, would you believe it, still a teenager. Koroleva inside the circle, and Russia have scored. Well, well, well. There's the trap, it's better this time. There's the shot, it's gone in. There's the equaliser. Russia have turns. Beautiful penalty corner. There's the shot. Can they get a touch here? There's the turn. There's the goal. Australia are back in front. Emily Chalker with goal number 81. Here's Australia on the attack again. Space here. In the wide right area inside the circle. Can she play it across? Plenty of bodies in there. It's loose. And it's Emily Chalker who puts it home right on the far stick. A win for the favourites, despite Russia giving them more problems than expected. And they would have a two-goal advantage going into game number two. It's nicely worked, it's saved, and that is it. And it's Williams, she's got it. Australia have got it. It's let her a goal. There's something to work out here, it's Chalker. Oh, they're looking to work it again, looking for a goal again, and they've got it. Celebrations for Australia. They can book their plane tickets to Tokyo. Australia leaving nothing to chance on the second day as they swept past Russia to book their place at next year's big party with an aggregate score of 9-2. I'm just so relieved, it's been a massive, massive year, a bit emotional and I'm just really proud of the girls, we had a really tough time against New Zealand and I think the way we played against Russia here, just, uh, it's a really good way to finish the year, so I'm just so relieved and really happy. One of the tightest ties, on paper at least, looked like being the match-up between China and Belgium, but playing in front of a home crowd isn't always an advantage and a nervous host nation started shakily. First real attack here for Belgium, and they're inside the circle straight away. Shot comes in, and an early goal. Belgium up and running. First real attack, and they've scored. Well, what a start. Found herself in acres of space. Belgium. Getting the shot away, and they do double their lead with under two minutes left. That will surely be that for Belgium. Took a deflection. 
into the roof of the net. So a fine start then for Belgium. 2-0 the final score and some work to do for Wang Yongcheng. Belgium in the driving seat going into the second match with a two-goal cushion and despite China pressuring with a series of penalty corners, they couldn't break the Red Panthers' resistance with time running out. What can China do this time? Shot comes in, it's not cleared. And still, the melee continues. Penalty stroke for China. And they've been given a toe hold here if they can convert. And they have. And now they're right back in this. Just one goal away from a shootout. Well, nerves of steel. Gu Bingfang, the 25 year old. And China have the ball where they want it. In and around that circle, it's coming and it's in! It's in! Well, what an amazing turn of events here. China have equalised on aggregates. Well, you can understand the tears. High drama inside the Wujin Hockey Stadium as China have taken the lifeline given to them with that penalty stroke. Incredible finish to the match and a shock Belgium now had to refocus ahead of the shootout with the host nation now bubbling with confidence. Definite takers as we're about to get this underway now. Leclerc starting for Belgium. Twisting and turning. Oh, and she's gone wide. Won't help Liang. In she comes. Gone the long way round. Oh, well done. Got back in time. Didn't get that shot away. Now then, can China get one in the bag? It looks like it. They've opened the scoring through Wang Na. And all the pressure now on Varsavel. Needs to score. And she's gone wide. Amazing scenes here. Well, this is it. If she scores, China are there. Chen Yi backs her way in. Trying to uh, out-muscle Ashling Doak. It's going to go down to the last penalty and the youngest player on the pitch, Ombre Ballonguier. Can she do it for Belgium? She can! How about that? Well, I certainly wouldn't like to be in their shoes. Here comes Lee Jiaqi, and it's wide! I'm not quite sure what happened there. Well, this time, no mistake. Agonising this. Alex Ganiers. And she's gone wide! And she's furious with herself. But China have done it. Incredibly. Tears of joy and tears of anguish at the end of an enthralling encounter and an epic finish from the hosts who were on their way to a sixth Olympic Games. The third pair in action this particular weekend was Spain, ranked number seven in the world, who faced Korea, who are currently positioned four places below the Iberians in 11th. The venue, Estadio Batiero in Valencia. There's the trap, there's the execution, and 
the reactions. Perfect from Ben and Iglesias. Trap, and it's fired in by Lola Riera. A narrow victory for the home side, who had to come from behind. But everything to play for in the second match, where a boisterous crowd was cheering the Red Sticks on to victory. This time from uh, Lucia Jimenez. Oh, it's out in front of goal and it's on its way in. Well, they couldn't get it clear and Spain have taken the lead. Well, she lost the ball. Jung Herbin did well initially. No real pace on the ball. But uh, none of her defenders dealing with it. And instead, Begonia Garcia was alert enough to jump on the chance, getting to her feet and slamming that one into the back of the net. 181 caps for her country and a chance here to send them to the Olympic Games. And in it goes, and surely that must be it. 2-0 on the night. 4-1 the aggregate score. And there it is, Spain. A valiant effort from Korea, but in the end, a deserved victory for Spain, who were finally able to break the Asians' resistance thanks to Lola Riera's coolly taken penalty stroke. And the Spain captain, Georgina Oliva, was overjoyed. Well, obviously now I feel really happy because uh, we had the goal and we had to be in Tokyo. So uh, the goal is achieved. So of course I'm really happy for all the girls and of, uh, uh, of course for our team. And we didn't play the be our best match, but we compete all the time, uh, the 120 minutes. So well, here we are. The men were also in action, of course, and there was the chance of a double for Spain with both teams in action. The men would have to contend with their neighbours from the north, France. Spain ranked 8th and France 12th in the current world rankings. Here they go, it's not to be locked with this time, it's straight through. Victor Charlein. Fighting, looking for the deflection, they've got it as well. And they're looking for more as well, it's back towards goal, they've got another one. With the stroke, and he's put it right into the corner. Pacamela! Oh, that's what he can do. It's Kamana again! It's in! A real ding-dong battle in the first meeting between these two, with Spain clawing their way back from 3-0 down to leave the match hanging in the balance, going into match two. Baumgarten, here he is again. Attacking the circle. Coming a long way, and there's the goal. They're off to a cracker again, France. Well, they were caught napping. Allowed to come a long way. Gaspar Baumgarten, no one attacking him. When it comes. This time it stops. Kicked away. Well, off the line, was it? Or no, it wasn't. Spain are level. Oh, good stop initially from Artur Tiafri. By Lockwood. Long way around, and it's found its way in. What a great run. And poked home in the end. See it again, given up cheaply, that ball, and what a run this was from uh, Kamada. And it is, in fact, Alvaro Iglesias who gets the final touch. He comes. And what a fantastic combination that was. 
from Spain with a chance to go back in front. And it's taken. Scorer, Javi Yunat. In it comes. And that's it. Spain are on their way to Tokyo. Another thriller and proof that there's nothing to split these two sides at the moment. The narrowest of victories for the host nation will have two teams on the plane to Tokyo. The Netherlands were expected to breeze past a Pakistan who no longer rank among the best teams in the world. Steeped in tradition though, the proud green shirts had no intention of just rolling over in Amsterdam. Trap is good and the finish is even better. He's put it away! And the reverse it goes! A quick fire goals! Trap is solid, he's come low, and the deflection sees it into the net. Trap is good, they're looking for a touch again! And will he work out for Kahn? And it will do! It will do in the end for Robert Kaplan! Trap is good, the execution again is magnificent! There he is! Only a last-ditch penalty corner from PC specialist Mink van der Verden, saving the home side from defeat there, but Pakistan showing that they may be on their way back, and the second game is wide open. I work out this for the Netherlands. The effort is on, oh, and the finish is on from Kellerman. He scored a beauty yesterday. He's got another one here. Looking to make it two out of two for the weekend and to extend the lead for the Netherlands. And he's able to do so. Same size. I think it's one of his cleanest strikes, but hey. As far as the Netherlands are concerned, who will care about that? Just to get them some belief for the lift going in to half time, but here's Poiser, his sort of area. And a regular result where Mirko Poiser is inside the circle. 3 0 Netherlands, it is they who have got the goal to inject. Trap and the finish from Mink van der Veerten. You simply do not stop them. He just hands the initiative back to the Netherlands. Peters and Peters! He persevered and then his moment came to lash home for five for the Netherlands. Here they come, and there is the goal for Janssen this time. Pakistan have been hit for six, it's double figures on aggregate. Here they go again. Fifth of this quarter, and they've scored this time. So, Rizwan Ali will celebrate, start the celebrations, get those tickets booked as the Netherlands are on their way to the Tokyo Olympics next year. The hosts had learnt their lesson and were clinical in the second game, putting Pakistan to the sword in front of a capacity crowd inside the iconic Wagner Stadium. And the importance of reaching the games was not lost on two-goal hero Mink van der Waerde. Yeah, it means a lot. It's it's the event that you play for, and uh, yeah, well, you get two chances. Uh, one be the European champion, where there's four or five good teams in the tournament who all could, could qualify, and then there's one other chance, which is the two yeah, best of uh, best of two against Pakistan, and that's uh, winning. This means a lot. Yeah. 
One match that looked impossible to call was the double header between Canada and Ireland in Vancouver. But a fired up Ireland put themselves in pole position after a good performance in match one. In some trouble here as Ireland strike first. And towards goal it goes, and Canada have got it. Oh, the finish is magnificent. It might still be on, and it is. Pereira Stam, oh my word. Inside the final 10 minutes, oh, they've got it. The injection, the trap, the execution, and that's it. So Ireland have the victory. An eight goal thriller which left the host with a lot to do in the second match. The Canucks were more than up for the challenge though and as they chased the goal that would take it into a shootout, we were treated to a finish that could have been scripted in Hollywood. Can they make something happen in the most dramatic way? Ireland standing firm. Oh, now that... Well, there might just be a referral. There might no, just be a referral. Senior, but I'm just the celebrations for Ireland, referral. they think it's... Yes, yes, so it. Guys, they it think so that it is time. I... Yep. Yeah, that's an infraction of the 29 of Ireland. So there's a pen, um, penalty stroke. Here goes Tupper. He's done it! He has done it for Canada! Drama at the death and nothing to choose between them after 120 minutes of hard-fought hockey, and so it all came down to the dreaded shootout. A shootout to conclude an extraordinary afternoon of hockey here in Vancouver. Johnston, here he goes. Taking it forward, up against Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald has denied it, but Johnston with the rebound. In the nick of time as well. Ireland's turn now. It's going to be Eugene McGee. And he's done it. Striker. The cruelest way to decide who goes to Tokyo in a shootout. Suki Panasar. Which way is he going to go? Oh, he's put it wide. He has put it wide. Ireland with the opportunity to take advantage here. John McKee, who scored the opening goal of this contest in this second match. Canada and their third attempt. That's a obstruction. Clear That's obstruction. That's the save, but the opportunity to put it in, and it has been. Next up for Canada, needs must that he converts. Wallace against Fitzgerald. Against the clock as well. Wallace, that's a lovely finish. Oh, that is superb. Just about keeps them alive. Here goes Robson now. Robson, has he got away from him? It's the first miss for Ireland. Forward he comes. Throws just biding his time and finishing with a plum. O'Donoghue, oh, oh, he's been denied. Incredible from David Carter. So Ireland is starting now. McGee up against Carter. Oh, that's really, really good. Sudden death now. Johnston, which way is he going to go? Oh, he squeezes it in. Here comes McKee. Oh, down there. What an error. What an error. Canada for the victory. Still, he's done it. to Tokyo! 
And just for the second time ever, there will be it. The Olympic Games, back-to-back -back Olympic Games. Sadly, there must be a loser, and despite a gutsy performance from 12th-ranked Ireland, it was the team two places above them, Canada, that captured the golden ticket, thanks to Adam Fraser's nerves of steel in the shootout. But he was not the only hero out there. I'm so happy for the guys. What a performance today. Everyone all over the pitch did everything that they ever could and it got us there today. At the end of the day, I mean, guys were running down corners. They were making stuff happen up front. They were blocking shots. It was one heck of a performance and I was so proud of the guys. So at the end of a spectacular weekend of hockey action, we had six more teams to add to the Olympic roster, three men's and three women's. Double Spain, of course, who can party twice as hard. China and Australia were the other successful women's teams, whilst Canada and the Netherlands joined Spain on the men's side. Still to come, another big weekend of action to look back on, with eight more Olympic berths up for grabs. Pat Kalinga Stadium in Bhubaneswar was the venue for India's match against underdogs Russia, who, to their credit, gave it a go in the first leg, falling by four goals to two. But on day two, the eight-time Olympic champions were not in a charitable mood. And Russia into the park, here's a shot, and that's a goal! Oh, what a start! Here's a chance, the wind-up shot, deflected into the far post! The last ball in! Akash Deep to the right-hand side, Akash Deep scores! It is played correctly, on it comes on the reverse stick, shot comes in! Careful here, Harlan Creek plays it in, here is oh, a lovely bit of skill on the reverse stick! Over the bar from Raman Deep. And here's a chance for Nilikanta! Rupinda drags and scores! Sobolevsky still going all the way through and a chance! It's been missed by Havilland. And hugs all round as India put their place on the plane to Tokyo. A show of strength from India as they swept aside the Russian challenge to book their place in Tokyo with an emphatic 11-3 aggregate victory. The Black Sticks of New Zealand were looking to reach their sixth straight Olympic Games as they welcomed the Koreans to Taranaki Hockey Club. And the first match was a tight one. Could have gone either way with the home team eventually edging it 3-2. A draw would be enough for them in the second leg. To the circle, that's Inglis, and still it might be on. Oh, they've got it, and it's that man again. Stephen Jeunesse scored twice yesterday. He opened the scoring yesterday, and he's done exactly the same here. Ideal start to the second quarter for New Zealand. Taken over nicely by Tarrant, and is that to be a finish, there is. Oh. It is a crucial goal for New Zealand. It's the trap, there's the flank, and wide. It's a lot more purpose about career. They need to show that, certainly as they're chasing the game. Get the free hit, and then McAleese can send it long up into those clear skies. English taking over now, advancing into the circle. Oh. Looking for that third goal, which would surely put the game away. And the reverse. That was uh, Jeunesse also. <laughs> Everyone waits. Kate Russell! He does what he does best. Came Russell 
who is one of those really, really strong. Jiang Junjun awaits. Oh, it's well left and shifted. Long corner it will be. It will be him this time, and wide he goes, and not for the first time in this one. Career are off target when he comes to a PC. Here comes the injection. There's the trap, and the save was good to deny Russell a second goal. In the middle. One big pad up to the right. It needs to be Jang. And still, New Zealand shall not be beaten. And that's it. New Zealand have done it. New Zealand threw then to their 13th Summer Games thanks to a convincing win on day two and the importance of the win was not lost on man of the match Nick Woods. It's huge man, like, uh, hockey in New, and New Zealand's growing and uh, for, the, for the sport in New Zealand it's a massive achievement for us. I just think uh, uh, ni nice to get it done with, with a 3-0 result and thought the boys played well and some good goals and, and good to get the ticket to Tokyo, everyone wants that and, and um, fantastic for us. Great Britain had both the men and women in action at the weekend and the men's side, ranked seventh in the world, started favourites against 11th ranked Malaysia. And in game one, they lived up to their billing with a routine 4-1 victory to give them a comfortable platform moving into day two. Well, Saif sends Kumar the wrong way and there is the 100th goal for Alan Forsyth. A goal yesterday, a goal today. As the aerial ball is thrown, it's a monster of an aerial ball and it's well brought down by Martin. Here goes Martin, Martin into the circle, feeding Ward, Ward getting his head up, and Ward with a ridiculous finish, shaped to cross it, Kumar bought it, and Ward fires it into the net to make it 2-0 to Great Britain. Chance here perhaps, Tenko on the reverse stick, good save, and then Pinner is alive. It's gone to Sheryl, and Sheryl takes it, and the score from, comes back into the path of Fitri Sari, and he pings it into the net, and Malaysia are on the scoreboard. Slowly on the left, it goes to Sam Ward. Ward with a drag flick, and Sam Ward scores. Sam Ward makes it 3-1, his second of the evening. Razi on the left-hand castle, he switches to the right, and Pinner doesn't even see it. Razi Rahim pings that one into the back of George Pinner's goal. Running into the head of the circle, he's got to call a rope, a rope with a shot, good save from Kuma. It might still be there, Martin! And it's nailed Sam Ward in the head. And Peter Wright immediately getting the physios on. And quickly take it, and here is an opportunity. A great chance here, far post, and it's in. Forsyth gets his second, and Great Britain's fourth. Kumar to his right, and this time he beats him to his left, and it is a hat trick for Alan Forsyth. Good work from Tenku. Tenku's ball inside. He wanted it back. He might get it back. How about that? from Jacob Draper. Crowd counting down. Dixon launches the aerial. And that is it, it's all over. The final hooter. And the Great Britain men are on their way to Tokyo next summer. Danny Kerry and his team have done a good job. They've qualified for the Olympic Games. Yeah, um, you know, falling up after the first leg, it's sort of like, it's easy to go into these games and be like, we're just going to try and like see it off, like you know, just just try not to lose. But um, you know, we wanted to go out there, put performance out there, um, make sure we won the second game, and you know, go off to Tokyo as so. well. Yeah, we lost to a uh, better team. Yeah, I know GB uh, very good side, and yeah, yesterday we, we down to three nil. So that means uh, today we need to more attacking, but it's not working well. But uh, still, uh, still I'm proud with my boys. 
Not too many pundits gave Austria a chance against neighbours Germany, whose pedigree is second to none. And it quickly became apparent at the hockey park in Mönchengladbach that it was going to be a long weekend for the men in red, as the four-time Olympic champions were quickly into their stride, taking a 5-0 victory into game number two. Coach that led the women's team to Olympic gold. And Germany here asking the questions. It's a double save. Oh, goodness me. Sent back in. And Matt Scrambo says, well, if you're not going to score, I will. Wonderful goalkeeping. Not just once, twice, three times. <laughs> and that's how you finish. Says Grant Bush, Fuchs denied first time around. It will be Cooper here. Oh, he's put it away. An instant response from Austria. Cancelling out Grant Bush's opener. This is the injection. Trap was scrappy, but the force of the effort from Lucas Winfeder. Drawing the save from Benjamin Melink. And work out again. Oh, what a finish that is. Marco Milkow. It's uh, broken down. And the effort is on. That's a smart save again from Alec. Big save once more. Both goalkeepers have made some top stops already. Hendricks is loving it out there now, isn't it? Into the circle, close to the baseline, is it? Constantine Stein with the goal. There is the third. There's the trap, it is towards him again, and he's done it again. Excellent finishing from Mikael Cooper. And just like that, they produce the arrays again on the day. Cooper! Oh, wonderful! Opted to go high this time, and he has found his target, and that is a hat trick of PCs in this contest. Straight down the middle. Here's Ruhr for Germany. Ruhr still just holds things up. Ruhr goes on and he's put it wide. Vanker, if he can gather it and he's been able to do so. That's closer. They're into the circle now. Great skills. This will be a wonderful goal for Germany. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from Niklas Bellen. Might turn out to be the match winner on the day here. That's nine on aggregate. They kept their cool. And the Maisie run into the circle. In the end, finished off by Niklas Velen. Is it to be a, a straight strike this time? Yes, there is. And Christopher Roth gets his customary goal. Forward, they're not done yet. They are still not done yet. Just gets away from Marco Milkow. And that'll do. Credit to Austria for making a match of it in the second leg, but it was a case of too little, too late for them as Germany secured the golden ticket for the 10-3 victory over Austria to the satisfaction of team captain Max Grambusch. Oh, it was great. I mean, everyone, all the players, we're just uh, aiming for the Olympics. It's the biggest thing we can achieve, um, and now we're just happy that we got there. Of course, I feel sad, but before uh, before this tournament, we know it was a hot, a tough. Uh, it would be a tough game uh, to 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 go to Tokyo, but at least like yesterday we did. We played not that well. Today we did, and uh, we can be proud of ourselves after that game today. So. Yeah, I'm a little bit sad, but also happy for the boys and for the team that we played with that well today. So we now know which men's teams will be contesting the Olympic competition in Tokyo. After the break, it'll be time to find out which of the women's teams will be on that plane as well.
Great Britain were hoping for double joy with both the men and women in action, and the ladies, who are currently ranked number five in the world, were expected to sweep Chile aside at Lee Valley, and they had very little problem in the first match as they took the honours by a score of three to zero, putting them in the driving seat going into match number two. Townsend into the circle, across the face of goal. Where's this going to fall? It's going to fall into the back of the net. Tata Howard. And here's a chance on the reverse stick. And Unsworth rifles it into the roof of the net. Firm Webb and Hinch and Chile do get their goal. And that is it. The final hooter sounds. A brave effort from the South Americans, but they gave themselves too much to do against the Olympic champions after the first day. And so Great Britain claimed the Olympic berth with a 5-1 aggregate win. So pleased for the rest of the team. We worked so hard the last couple of weeks and, you know, it's now to know that we're going to the Olympics to defend our title. I think we're all ecstatic and we can't wait now for the next few months and some hard training ahead. Another nation looking to send two teams to Tokyo was Germany, of course. And back in Mönchengladbach, the hosts were favourites as they took on Italy, looking to make it to their first ever Olympic Games. A controlled performance from the hosts in the first match meant that Italy would be chasing the match on day two, trailing by two goals to nil. On the reverse, what a start. It's nicely worked up. Nicola Renz. So, so simple for Germany at the moment. Playing with fire on the edge of their own circle and very nearly punished. Amelie Wortmann and the touch on from Elisa Greifer from one end to the other. Oh, and this space here now for Amelie Wortmann. Oh, it's a good save. And is it in? Yes, it is. The Anna Müller-Wieland to be a part of. She scores. Cue those celebrations, big time for Germany. No doubt in the end where the victory was going as Germany found another gear in match number two against the deflated Italy and they will be joining the men in Japan next year. I think we all feel really good. Um, it was a really fun game. Everybody was pretty nervous this morning because obviously yesterday we had like a 2-0 lead but still um, today was still uh, a big step ahead of us and now everybody's really released and we just feel happy. Well, uh, from the beginning we knew that a uh, play against Germany would be really tough for us. But uh, I think that uh, especially yesterday we we fight really hard and I think that we show a really good hockey. Today, unfortunately, it was, I mean, I think that it was a really bad result for us, but uh, still we keep fighting until the end and it's what we had to do. So a big compliment to Germany. World Cup runners-up Ireland were looking to make it to their first ever Olympic party at the expense of Canada. But the first match was played in atrocious conditions and both teams found it difficult to break the deadlock, leaving the tie wide open going into match day two. And what drama we were about to be treated to after the second match also finished goalless. And we're good to go. Norlander into the circle. Has eight seconds in which to try and score. Norlander scores. to the circle, Pinder up against Williams, and Williams makes the save, and that is a miss for Ireland. Woodcroft, second chance for her. Into the circle she goes, and she scores. As Ireland and Daly try and get their first score. Daly sent wide, what a finish from Daly. That is absolutely brilliant. Looks to keep up Canada's 100% record and there's a penalty stroke as McFerrin fells right to try and make it 3-1. McManus sends the keeper the wrong way and Ireland are in the real trouble now. Great stroke from McManus. Here comes Upton then with all the pressure on Upton. Trying to commit the keeper. The keeper does well. And she's run out of time. Here we go then. This to book a place for Bree Stairs and Canada. And McFerrin makes the save. It's still there, but Stairs can't score. 
Well, there's still life in this one. Now, it is Beth Barr, the 24-year-old, has to score up against Williams. Barr taking it to the right. Barr scores! This for a place at the Olympic Games. Johnston to the left-hand side. McFerrin makes the save. McFerrin has made the save. Watkins into the circle, has to score. Watkins to the left-hand side. Watkins trying to spin the keeper, scores! And Ireland have come from 1-3 down to tie it up at 3-all. And we go to sudden death. Unbelievable scenes here at Donnybrook. Woodcroft, silence descends upon the stadium. Woodcroft into the circle at pace. Woodcroft scored the first time. Can she score the second? She's missed it. And it is Ireland who are going to the Olympic Games. They have turned around the most improbable situation. From 1-3 down, Ireland able to turn it around and spark amazing scenes at Donnybrook as they can now look forward to a trip to the Olympic Games after missing out in London and Rio. And goalkeeper Aisha McFerrin explained how much the victory meant to Ireland. Everything, it's not just what these 18 girls here put in, it's years and years of hard work, it's finally paid off and we 100% deserve this and yeah, it's just amazing, it's amazing. You can just hear the crowd in the background, you, you know it's an amazing, uh, amazing thing for Irish hockey and I'm just really proud of everybody. The last match in our summary sees India taking on USA as the home side look to make it to the game for the third time, having qualified in 1980 and last time out in Rio. USA had qualified on six occasions, meddling with a bronze on home soil back in 1984. But India were merciless in the first match, winning 5-1. But USA weren't dead and buried by any means. RMC Army running one. Gets a flyer, now Sharky, it's in at the far post! Deflected in by Magden. What a start! Amanda Magden sliding in on the far post, and the USA have the start they required. A fist bump from Yannicka Schottman, and Magden gives the USA hope of an unlikely comeback. Here is Matson. Matson has Sharky inside that Sharky. Good combinations by the United States, and here's a chance for Sharkey, and she scored! And the US get their second! India nil, United States two, and Kathleen Sharkey scores from open play. And it ends up with Sharkey, Sharkey into the circle. Lovely pass, Gregor, far post, scores! It's another goal! It's Parker! Who makes it 3-0? Well worked by the USA. Anyway, either way, you're a player down, and here is Magden, already has one, looking for third. She's got it, and it's 4-0, and we're level on aggregates. Magden levels the tie up with 2.47 left in the first half. What a stunning first two corners for the United States of America. Magden with two in front of her, rolls away. There's a yellow card, and Manley's done some good stuff down the back, and a chance here. It's still loose, and it's cleared only as far as Rani. Rani with the shot! She's done precious little in this contest. But when she is required, Rani finds the roof of the net and it rubs salt into the wounds of the USA. It was lax from Manley to push the ball away, pick up the yellow card. Rani goes down the other end, or India go down the other end, and Rani sticks it into the net. Dr. Patra missed the goal, so he's running for the replay on the television screen up the VIP tunnel. That is it, it's all over. It's heartbreak for the United States of America. It's delight for India, but heavens, weren't they made to work hard? Well, close in the end after a brave effort, but that amazing match could only have one winner, and that winner proved to be India in the end, who took it 6-5 on aggregates. Um, I think the big learning point is to just keep fighting. Um, we didn't come out on the front foot in the third quarter yesterday, and we had to come out on the front foot today, so 
just that's a learning point. We can now finally peruse the teams that will be fighting it out for the medals next year in Tokyo, starting with the men. Some great hockey nations represented, including the defending Olympic champions Argentina and world champions Belgium. On the women's side, the same is true, with Great Britain on site in Tokyo looking to repeat their success from Rio, and beaten finalists there and current world champions, the Netherlands, will be looking to go one better, I'm sure. For all the players, though, it's time to start preparing physically and mentally for the challenge that lies ahead. But I have a sneaking suspicion that there'll be a lot of Tokyo dreaming going on over the months ahead. Well, thanks for watching, and to the successful nations themselves, good luck, and may the best team win.